Have you ever asked yourself, what is the difference between a clarinet and a saxophone? Never. Now would be a great time to start. When I say difference, I talk about the sound of these instruments. I think that even the least musical literate person can probably tell a saxophone from a clarinet. Maybe you have some guesses. Surely the materials have to play a part in the creation of the sound. The clarinet sounds wooden and the saxophone sounds metallic. But wait, they are both plastic clarinets and saxophones and they are even wooden saxophones. and metal clarinets. Which don't lose their unique sound. Maybe it's the shape of the instrument. After all, the saxophone seems way more curvy than the clarinet. But there are also straight saxophones and curved clarinets. And to be fair, these things have some influence on the sound of the instrument. But there is a more fundamental difference. Let's look up the length of the straight saxophone and the clarinet. The clarinet has a length of 26 in, ah, um, 66 centimeters. The straight saxophone has a length of 71 centimeters. Okay, now which instrument can produce the lowest note? This should be easy. If all the holes are closed for both instruments, then the saxophone has the longer resonance length. So the note of the saxophone should be lower, but this is actually wrong. The lowest note of the clarinet is a D3 and the lowest note of the straight saxophone is an A flat 3. Something is definitely wrong here. The shorter instrument has the lower note. This seems pretty counterintuitive. There's also something else that doesn't seem right. A musician can actually produce a whole series of notes, even if all holes of the instruments are closed. These are called the overtones or harmonics of the instrument. When you hear the sound of the saxophone, you don't hear a single frequency, but you hear a mixture of different frequencies of the overtone series. But the saxophone and the clarinet have different overtones. Here are the overtones of the clarinet and the overtones of the saxophone. The clarinet has only the odd harmonics and the saxophone has all the harmonics. This makes the sound of these instruments unique. Okay, let us take a step back and look at the underlying physics. A simpler and therefore inferior instrument is the flute. It's probably the most basic case of an open open pipe. If we cut off a bit at the one end and close all the holes, we get a pipe which is open at both ends. Here's our pipe. Let's imagine we have a flutist that produces a very steady vibration at the left end. The sine wave represents the air pressure at a particular point. Outside of the pipe the air is at atmospheric pressure. When the wave reaches the right end of the pipe, the wave is getting reflected and travels in the other direction. The reflected wave also gets flipped. To understand this better, we can think of little air particles. In a region with lots of particles, the air pressure is high. When a region of high pressure reaches the open end, the air outside of the pipe comes rushing in. The opposite is true for a region of low pressure. This results in a reflected wave with a phase shift of pi. If we add these two waves together, we get a so-called standing wave. You can see that the wave is standing still and the notes and antinotes are at fixed positions. The obvious next step is to let the green wave be reflected at the left end of the pipe. This results in the purple wave. Now let's add in a few more waves and see what's happening to the resulting wave. It's a total mess and most of the waves cancel each other out. But if the length of the pipe is changed by just a little bit, the waves all collapse into two traveling waves. At this particular length and with this particular frequency, we get resonance. We can also change the pitch of the first wave. Important to note is that at both ends of the pipe, the resulting pressure is at atmospheric pressure. A normal flutist actually doesn't produce a perfect sine wave. 
she or he produces a whole range of frequencies and only the frequencies that induce a resonance get amplified and can be heard. These are the harmonics or overtones of the instrument. But the saxophone isn't a flute and neither is the clarinet. The mouthpiece of these two instruments doesn't have an open hole. When we close up the left hole, the situation changes. Let's start with our initial wave. The reflection at the right end is the same. The pressure amplitude gets flipped. The change happens at the next reflection. At the closed end, the pressure of the incoming wave is the same as that of the outgoing wave. We can visualize this again with our particle model. When a high pressure front reaches the closed end, the particles get stuck and have nowhere to go. The pressure of the reflecting wave is identical to that of the incoming wave. Let's add a few more waves and examine the resulting standing wave. If we change the length of the pipe, we get a resonance at a particular length. Changing the frequency also results in the same. Note that there is always an antinode at the closed end and a node at the open end. Let's review our newly gained knowledge. Here are the first three harmonics of both pipes. For each pipe we can calculate the wavelength of the standing wave and its relationship to the pipe length. For example, let's look at the fundamental of the closed pipe. You can see that the standing wave is back to the beginning after 4 times the pipe length. So the wavelength lambda is equal to 4L. The frequency is inversely proportional to the wavelength. Just like that we can calculate all the frequencies shown on screen. We can see that for the closed pipe we get only the odd harmonics. 3 times, 5 times, 7 times the fundamental frequency and so on. These are exactly the harmonics of the clarinet. Compare this to the open pipe. Here we get all the harmonics. 2 times, 3 times, 4 times the fundamental. These are the harmonics of the saxophone. This is pretty weird. We understand why the clarinet has only the odd harmonics. The mouthpiece acts like a closed end. But why does the saxophone have all the harmonics? A saxophone has the same harmonics as a flute. But the mouthpiece of a saxophone is pretty much the same as that of a clarinet. There should also be a pressure note at the mouthpiece. The problem boils down to this. What kind of geometry produces the same harmonics as an open open pipe but has a pressure note at one end? If you want to ponder about this question, you can stop the video now. Else I will continue by giving you the answer. The saxophone has the shape of a cone and the clarinet has a cylindrical shape. So for the saxophone, the radius of the pipe is growing. We don't have a planar wave but a spherical wave in the cone. Because of energy conservation, the pressure has to decrease when we increase the area. Or in other words, because the area is growing, the loudness of the sound has to decrease. Here comes the famous inverse square law into play, which you may know from Newton's law of gravitation or from Coulomb's law. Because these interactions expand spherical in all directions and we happen to live in three dimensions, this 1 over r squared sneaks into these equations. Same happens to the intensity of the sound wave and because the intensity is given by the pressure squared, through a bit of proportional reasoning we can follow that the pressure is proportional to 1 over r. Now let us look at the standing wave in a conical pipe. For that I used a huge cone and cut off a bit at the left side, so that the left side is open. The more you cut away, the more the cone resembles an open pipe. Then I rescaled the length of the remaining part and the amplitude of the waves, so that we can better see what's going on. The standing wave is identical to that of an open open pipe. Closing the pipe a bit, we see that the amplitude of the wave is getting lower at the right end of the pipe. Let's close it a bit more. We see that the maximum amplitude is slowly moving to the left end of the pipe. If we close the pipe completely, the maximum of the amplitude has moved to the left end of the pipe and at the end we get an antinode exactly how you would expect it from the closed end. But the important part of this is to look at the positions of the nodes and antinodes. 
when closing the pipe. They don't move. A conical pipe which is closed at one side allows for the exact same harmonics than a cylindrical pipe with both ends open. And that's it. This is the reason why a clarinet sounds different compared to a saxophone. This also explains why a clarinet can play a lower note compared to the saxophone. The fundamental of the closed pipe has a wavelength which is four times the length of the pipe. For the open pipe the wavelength is just two times the pipe length and because the frequency is anti-proportional to the wavelength the frequency of the closed pipe is smaller than that of the open pipe. So for any pipe we get the fundamental twice as low when we close one end. If you have a recorder at home you can try this on your own. Just take the mouthpiece, blow in it and close the end with your hand. This was just an intuitive reasoning aided with some visualizations. There are probably still some open questions you may want to investigate for yourself. Another approach which can be equally or for some more illuminating is to solve the wave equation for a conical pipe directly. I know that this isn't the most mathematical video but I'm still thankful for 3 blue one brown for organizing the sum of math exposition and somehow giving me the motivation to do this video. Thanks for watching.